Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In one of our previous videos, we talked about boiling water reactors. Do you know what's the most common type of nuclear reactor? The answer is a pressurized water reactor. So let's talk about this pressurized water reactor in this video. As the name suggests, the characteristic of a pressurized water reactor is the pressurizer, which keeps the working fluid under pressure. Due to high pressure, the working fluid can be used at higher temperatures without boiling. Thus, heat can be extracted from the core more efficiently to generate electricity. As we have seen in the case of a boiling water reactor, there is only one coolant loop that gets the heat from the reactor and converts water to steam for power generation. But in a pressurized water reactor, there are two separate coolant loops, namely the primary and the secondary loop. In the primary coolant loop, demineralized water is used as a coolant. The temperature of water while entering the reactor core is around 275 degrees Celsius and increases to 315 degrees Celsius as the water is heated. Despite having high temperatures, water in the loop remains in the liquid state. This is because the pressure in the loop is usually around 155 bar which corresponds to the liquid phase in the phase diagram shown. A pressurizer is used to maintain the pressure in the reactor vessel according to the change in temperature. Now let's see the working of the secondary loop. In the primary loop, the heat is extracted from the reactor core by the water, but steam is not yet generated. Thus, a secondary loop is used for generating steam. The secondary loop uses demineralized water as a coolant. Wonder why demineralized water is used? Well, because in this water, the dissolved minerals and ions are removed from the water, which otherwise might result in reactor damage. The water at high temperature from the primary loop is sent to the heat exchanger through small tubes where it transfers the heat through the walls of the tubes to the coolant at low pressure in the secondary loop. The difference between the coolant in both the loops is that the coolant in the primary loop is at high pressure while the coolant in the secondary loop is at relatively low pressure. This allows the water to boil and convert to steam. The coolant in the secondary loop thus gets the heat without mixing the two fluids. The separation of the two fluids ensures that the coolant in the secondary loop does not get radioactive. Thus, finally, the steam is generated in the secondary loop. The steam is then sent to drive a turbine which in turn drives the generator. Now, the secondary coolant or the steam is sent through a condenser to cool it down. Thus, the water is obtained and sent back to the steam generator. Apart from converting the steam into water, the condenser also helps in maintaining a vacuum at the outlet of the turbine. This causes a pressure drop in the turbine and hence the energy extracted from steam is maximized. One interesting property that makes the pressurized water reactors very stable is the negative temperature coefficient. We know that water is used as a moderator in pressurized water reactors because water molecules slow down the neutrons to facilitate the nuclear fission. But when the temperature of water increases, it expands, making it less dense. So the probability of slowing down the neutrons decreases, which reduces the rate of reaction. Therefore, if the rate of reaction increases beyond normal, the moderation of neutrons will be reduced due to the expansion of water and the chain reaction will slow down. This property is called the negative temperature coefficient and the process is referred to as self-regulating. Moving on to the reaction control, we have seen that a boiling water reactor controls the reaction by adjusting the flow rate of the coolant. But in a pressurized water reactor, the negative temperature coefficient helps in controlling the reaction rate. To decrease power, inlet of the turbine is shut off. This causes less steam to be drawn from the steam generator. As a result, the temperature of the primary loop increases and the power output decreases. Thus, the self-regulating process causes the temperature to return to normal. Now, let's see some advantages of the most common nuclear reactor. First, as we discussed earlier, the pressurized water reactor are very stable due to the self-regulating process. Due to the primary and secondary loops being separate, the secondary loop does not get contaminated by radioactive materials. In case of loss of power, the control rods held by electromagnets fall into the core by gravity. This shuts down the reaction safely. Also, pressurized water reactors, due to their compactness, can be used in nuclear submarines and nuclear ships. That's all the advantages of PWR, but there are also some disadvantages like the construction cost is increased because high strength pipings are needed for working at high pressure and temperature. The addition of high pressure components like pressurizer and steam generators makes the working complex and increases the capital cost. Moreover, the constant flow of neutrons from the reactor causes the steel of the reactor pressure vessel to become less ductile over time. Hence, proper repair or replacement is needed. 
So that's all about the working of a pressurized water reactor, its advantages and disadvantages. Stay tuned for more content. And until then, goodbye.